All right, so moving on, we're gonna now start looking at actual movements, okay? The first movement that I like to get people doing is, I don't have a multi-million dollar camera to break down somebody's sprint stride, and up to this point, you haven't warmed up enough to be sprinting, yeah. okay? So it'd be kind of crazy, right? But I do wanna analyze people's body and movement. So the next thing I'd wanna look at is their gait pattern. It's a fancy way of saying, let's look at your walking yeah. pattern, okay? In the previous test, we did the posterior summary, and one of the things we mentioned was, the ability to have your opposing side of your back firing off when you created pressure, okay? It's gonna lead into this test. So what I'm gonna get you to do is pretend I'm not here. You're gonna walk away from the camera over there, okay? And then you're gonna walk back towards me. And I'll explain what's going on with your walk if we need to make any small changes because the smaller things you're gonna change in a subtle sense will progress or work into the things you need to commit to or work with when you're creating resisting forces. It's a fancy way of me saying working out, okay? If you wanna keep your body healthy, it's the smaller intricate connections or activation points that you can use, okay? So, pretend I'm not here. You need to walk towards the door and then walk back, okay? Just the way I normally walk? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm literally working on how to walk yeah. properly. And that's smart, right? And you wanna get people working with that. Cause this is a smaller move, but who's to say that these intentional patterns of impact that the walking is don't articulate or progress into more intensive movements. Okay? Exactly. So go ahead and walk for me. Good. Okay? And then bring it back. Like this? Yeah. Pretend like I'm not here, dude. Do your thing. This is how you're going to test people too if you want to use this stuff. Yeah? Good. Alright. Okay. So one other thing we mentioned was in the posterior test was I needed the opposing side of the back to fire off before I start describing your walk, okay? Why was that important? You know why? No, I don't. Okay, that's then that's fair. fine, yeah, that's fine, okay? And that's, you're gonna teach people this, okay? One thing I like to show people or kind of teach people is almost everything we do is gonna be rotational. To prove my point, do you think walking is rotational? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, it, it can be. Yeah, the best way to prove it is to tell people to put their thumb on their bum. Does your bum push into your thumb when you take a step? Yeah. When you land and your body reacts, does it push? Yeah. So why would you now need the opposing side of the back to fire off? So it doesn't over-rotate. Yeah. Momentum doesn't take me for a ride. I'm in control of my movement. Okay. So leading this into some other stuff, when we talk about his walk, or we talk about anybody's walk, why do you think now the external bias is a problem? Because I'm getting rotation in so many areas. I should be getting rotation in my feet. My knees should activate, my hips should activate, and then my shoulders need to rotate too. But I need to have them rotating forward and back. And again, this leads into bigger movements when I'm running, okay? So now, with that being said, why is an external bias an issue? I'm not using my full footprint. What am I mostly missing? Out of my feet, specifically my toes, what's the toe that I'm missing a lot? I'm not using. My big toe. Big toe, yeah. okay. Does the big toe not translate into things I need to yeah. commit to, okay? Again, the smaller things lead into the bigger things. I'm jamming my ability to articulate a change or a transition. I'm only using certain muscle groups and I'm over exasperating some of those imbalances if I don't get in the habit of working on that. So I want to be successful when I'm working with clients and I want them to change the smaller things and have good lifestyle changes where they're being aware of this fitness thing and their health all the time. So if I can say to them, hey, listen, when you go to walk and you have your feet turning out, I want you to try to work on this. I'm pushing the toes through and really selling it. Sure, we're silly, who cares? Because when we go to do the movements in our program, whether it be resistance training with lunges, or you know, they run, they change direction, they're, they're doing squats, hip pressing, they have to understand how to activate these areas cohesively. If I allow them to go back to what they feel comfortable with, all the work I've done with them during that hour goes. So I have to make those changes for them. It has to be a habitual change. Yeah. So I wanna make sure that I'm sharing that information with them. What they put into it is what they're gonna get out of it. But if I'm very thorough with them and I show them these little small things, and then I check in with them, I know whether they're being accountable, 
and I know I'm being accountable to them. Okay? So, so what I would say to you is get out of the habit of that external bias. Try to use your big toe. When you go to walk, commit to pulling the feet up and then push through the feet. Those selling points and then bring your arm back will lead into those subtleties and it becomes a subconscious thing. And you feel more aware. Your body reacts to something and commits together. So you want to have that understanding. Okay? Cool. Okay. You're probably pausing. <laughs>